Hey, what's up? It's Caleb from Caleb Video Maker 2 in my spanking new attire. Hey, boy. How are you? I know you guys are dying to know what we're going to talk about in this video. Well, we're going to talk about the details of Oracle constraints. I know we've spoken of constraints, but we haven't actually gone into detail of what the keywords are to make constraints. And we only really talked about foreign key constraints and a couple other things. So this video, oh, dropped my chalk. Oh, I got chalk on my brand new shirt. The goal of this video is to go over most of the constraints you're going to run into when you're working with Oracle Database. So what is a constraint? A constraint is basically a rule of what data we allow in a column. Another way to think about it is it forces the database to work or allow certain things. So foreign key constraints force a column to reference a row of another table or of the same table. There's also other kinds of constraints though, not just foreign key constraints, although that is one type of constraint. The first constraint is not null. This is when you command a column to always require a value. A null is the absence of a value. And something that kind of bugs me is when people say a null value. Because it's like saying a nothing something. It's... What? The second on the list is primary key. But you better not forget about that foreign key. Now these two, you kind of get how they work because we've talked about it. <laughs> I swear, my dog is silent all day until I make a video and then he's just like, all over everything. You kind of already get how these work, but these are key words you're going to have to use to tell Oracle that, hey, this is a primary key, or hey, this is a foreign key. The next constraint is called a check constraint. And if you haven't heard of this one, you should really check it out. <laughs> there is another one we're going to talk about, and that's the unique constraint. Now, another keyword you're going to run into, and I don't think this is technically a constraint, but I'm gonna write it anyways, it's default. Now all of these should be in uppercase, but I, I didn't realize I was writing the lowercase until I was already like here. And by then it was, it was too much to have to rewrite. Now we're gonna go through some of these and talk about some details so that way you know what each one of these means. We discussed not null and unique should be pretty obvious. When you put unique on a column, it's saying that every single row has to have a unique value. So you couldn't have one row with a value five and then another row with a value five that would not work out. Primary key is essentially the combination of not null and unique. That's because a primary key always needs to be unique so we can uniquely identify that row and it always needs to have a value. Another thing for the primary key is that it shouldn't change. If you can design your database that way, that is a huge plus. The foreign key constraint tells the database that every value in this column has to match a value of another column. Oftentimes, the foreign key is going to reference the primary key, meaning every single row in that column has to have a value that exists in another table's primary key or that table's primary key. So if you have this table and we have a couple values in it, such as five, six, seven, eight, and over here we have another table and we need to put data into this but we label the column as a foreign key, that means the value five would be acceptable, six, seven, and eight would be acceptable, but if you put something like 10, that's unacceptable. That's because this value doesn't exist in the column that we're referencing. This would likely be the primary key, and this would be the foreign key that you would tell it to reference this column. Now moving on to the check constraint. This one is actually really, really super cool and I'm excited to get into this one in more detail in future videos. The check constraint allows us to restrict more specifically on what data we allow or don't allow. Think of it like this. The unique says, hey, they all have to be different. The not null says everything has to have a value. But what if we want to be more specific, like the value has to be between 10 and 100. That is where a check constraint might be useful for you because you can say things like that. Essentially, we're going to give it a Boolean expression. A Boolean expression always evaluates to true or false. An example of this is if you had a banking application, you could make a minimum transaction, right? So let's say you're allowed to transfer money from account to account, 
but you have to do at least five dollars or a dollar it doesn't really matter and no more than a thousand dollars so you could say something like between one and a thousand and then you have to say what column so you could say something like transfer amount so i kind of run out of space there but this is a boolean expression is the transfer amount between one and a thousand? The options are yes, and if that's the case, it'd be true, and the data would be inserted. Or it could be no, which is false, and that's just not gonna work out for you. Now the default keyword can be used very similarly. To continue on with our banking application, you could have it so when you create an account, the default balance of that account is zero. Now that you kind of get a gist of what all these do, how do you actually implement these in a database? Well, that's what we're gonna start diving into in the upcoming videos. So be sure to check those out. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. It's a lot of fun for me. I'm really enjoying it. So <laughs> please stick along and be sure to subscribe and you know, like all the videos and all those good things. Uh, it means a lot to me. So thank you and I'll see you in the next one.